When strain gauges are subjected to strain, their resistance changes by a very small amount proportional to the strain. In order to measure this small change in resistance accurately, the most popular circuit used is a Wheatstone bridge. This is a simple network of four resistors connected end to end to form a square having four corners. Across one pair of diagonal corners, an excitation voltage is applied and across the other pair of diagonal corners, the output of the bridge is measured, designated as E output. This is the basic Wheatstone bridge. The fundamental properties of the bridge is that if the ratio of resistances in one pair of the adjacent arms is equal to the ratio of resistance in the other pair, then the output from the bridge is zero and we say that the bridge is balanced. When one of the resistances increases by a small amount, then the bridge is no longer balanced and E output will have a value let us say E1. Here only a quarter of the bridge has changed resistance and this is called a quarter bridge configuration. Now if the resistance in an adjacent term decreases by the same amount then the unbalance in the bridge is doubled and E out will have a value of 2 times E1. Since half the bridge has changed resistance this is a half bridge configuration. Similarly, if the resistances in the remaining two arms of the bridge change by the same amount but in opposite direction to the change in adjacent arms, then the unbalance would be increased by four times and the AE output will be four times E1. Since here all the arms of the Wheatstone bridge are changing resistances, we call this a full bridge configuration. For instance, with one arm bonded on the top surface of a cantilever beam, the gauge is connected to one arm of the bridge and the other arms are completed with precision resistors internal to the strain measuring instrument. When the beam is loaded vertically, the strain gauge will be in tension, its resistance will change by plus delta R corresponding to strain. On the same beam, if we have a second strain gauge bonded to the bottom surface at the same cross section, then the second gauge can be connected to the adjacent arm of the bridge and in this case the bottom gauge will change resistance by minus delta R and the output of the bridge will be doubled. Practical example, one gauge on top surface of a cantilever beam is connected to a micro measurements model P3 strain indicator as a quarter bridge. The instrument completes the bridge internally with high precision resistors and when the beam is loaded, it displays the output from the strain gauge directly in terms of micro strain. A second gauge is bonded to the bottom surface of the same beam and both the gauges can be connected to the model P3 as a half bridge. Now when the beam is loaded with the same weight, the reading on the display is twice the earlier value. This does not mean that the strain on the beam is doubled. It means that the Wheatstone bridge is giving double the output for the same strain because of the half bridge configuration. With four strain gauges on the same beam, two on the top surface and two on the bottom surface, when the beam is subjected to bending, the two top gauges will be in tension and the two bottom gauges will be in compression. These gauges have to be connected together so as to have tension gauge adjacent to a compression gauge in order to get the maximum output from the completed Wheatstone bridge. The connections are shown in this sketch. A typical full bridge connection using four strain gauges on a beam is seen here. Full bridges are commonly used for making load cells, displacement sensors, pressure sensors, torque transducers, 
or for measuring any physical parameter that results in strain on a component.